Hi everybody, welcome to this video. We're gonna be presenting the 15 best targets in our opinion to take without a telescope. So we made a video for each season before with a telescope of the best targets to photograph. Um, so this is kind of like closing the loop on the tutorials to find targets to photograph in the sky. So we hope it will help you guys uh, in the long term. Let's get started. Number 1. Messier 31, the Andromeda Galaxy Messier 31 is huge and bright, and is the easiest of all galaxies to photograph without a telescope. Here is an image of M31 using just a DSLR camera and a tripod. No tracking. And here is the same object using a tracker. Of course, it is much neater and has more details thanks to the longer exposures. You can also get M31 pretty easily, with a bigger lens like this one for example, where we used our 300mm lens at f5.6. Messier 33, the Triangulum Galaxy. M33 is the second easiest to photograph after M31. It has beautiful, bright spiral arms with lots of star-forming activity. Capturing this target wide field will not yield a lot of details, but you can use the wide framing to your advantage and also include the Andromeda Galaxy, as well as the star cluster NGC 752 in the same frame, as seen here. Number 3. Messier 42, the Orion Nebula. M42, along with M43, is our third pick for the best targets to image with a DSLR camera and no telescope. The Orion Nebula is the most iconic in the entire night sky, and is actually the easiest of all to photograph during the winter season. Here is our image of M42 with just a DSLR and tripod. Now here is a few months later, with the use of a star tracker. Notice how the Running Man Nebula becomes visible. I see 434, the Horsehead Nebula. With an unmodified DSLR camera and a tripod, I see 434 is not so easy to capture but we thought to mention it anyway as this is one of the most famous targets in the sky. Our camera is not modified, so we really needed a tracker for this as you can see here. There are still great details visible. In your image, you should be able to spot not only the Horsehead Nebula, but also the Flame Nebula and the bright bottom star from Orion's belt, Alnitak. Number 5. Messier 78 M78 is not an easy one, but it still deserves a spot on this list. You will definitely need a tracker for this one, and a lens that will allow you to shoot wide. We suggest that you aim towards Orion's belt like we did on this image, using a 50mm lens, and set your aperture to f4 or below. I see 2118, the Witch Head Nebula. The Witch Head Nebula is the last target in the vicinity of the Ryan Nebula that deserves to be mentioned in this list. Although not too difficult to photograph, you probably shouldn't attempt this with a cheap lens unless you have a good tracker and plan to image it for many hours. It is faint, but rather large and not far from the very bright star Rigel, making it a very easy target to find in the sky. We used a Canon T3i and a 50mm lens at f1.8 to get this result and the same lens at f4 here attached to a 7D Mark II Canon camera. Number 7. Barnard's Loop Although Barnard's Loop also contains four of the targets we've previously mentioned, the loop is still a target on its own, and is actually meant to be photographed without a telescope. This was taken with our 7D Mark II during episode 8. Using a 50mm lens, like the image you see here, Make sure to frame everything properly to get M42, M43, the Running Man Nebula, M78, the Horsehead and Flame Nebula, the Witch Head Nebula, and Beetlejuice. We definitely recommend a tracker for this, although we're pretty curious as to see what you can achieve without one. Here is our very first shot back when we had our Canon T3i. The 7D Mark II and our experience made a pretty big difference. Messier 45, 
the Pleiades. M45 is part of the easy three targets for beginner astrophotographers. The main challenge is to manage to get the blue gas visible around the stars. That is actually very easy to do with a star tracker. You can even start seeing some nebulosity with just one shot of about 90 seconds if your sky is okay. It is not impossible to also get it with just a tripod and a DSLR camera, as long as you take many exposures. You can capture this target using a telephoto lens, in our case 300mm, or using a wider lens, as seen here with our Canon 50mm lens. Number 9. NGC 1499. The California Nebula. The California Nebula is a beautiful elongated nebula with a red tint. It resembles the state of California, hence its name. You could capture this target with a telephoto lens, but we recommend the use of an HA filter. If you do not have one, try photographing it wide field, like we did here. Try to frame it right so you can also get M45 in there. The red hue of the California Nebula, the blue color of the Pleiades, and the dark trail dividing them in the middle make for a great looking image. MD1 and MD2, boats in the Cigar Galaxy. Two galaxies very easy for beginners, and for the price of one. MD1 and MD2 are a pair of galaxies in the constellation of Ursa Major. The main challenge is to bring out the details in MD1's spiral arms, as well as the red gas expelling from the center of Messier 82. Here is our try with just our Canon T3i and a tripod at 300mm f5.6. We later tried with the same camera and lens, but on a star tracker, and this is what we got. Both of these were no more than 2 or 3 hours of exposure. Number 11. Messier 51. The Whirlpool Galaxy. Another very easy deep sky object for beginners. One of the best examples of what happens when two galaxies collide. We've tried this target twice. The first time was actually a complete accident as we were aiming for a different target. You can see it here using a 50mm lens. We'll show you the full image that includes our intended target, which is at number 15 on this list. Here is our second attempt, using a 300mm lens at f5.6. Not too bad for barely an hour of exposure, right? The moon. Since there is no point of doing deep sky imaging when the moon is up, why not capture the moon itself? Our satellite might be a burden for us deep sky imagers, but since you can't tell it to go away, make the best out of it and find ways to be creative with it. We have a full post on our website about this very subject and with some great examples. Capturing the moon with a telephoto lens is very easy, but just like this image, you can also photograph it with a phone or a point-and-shoot camera through a pair of binoculars. That's how we started. Number 13. The Milky Way The Milky Way, an obvious one. This is by far the easiest astro-related target to capture. The only catch is, well, you really need to drive quite a bit of a distance from the city to get a really, really nice picture of it. Overall, it is super easy to photograph the Milky Way. You can simply take one long exposure and be happy with the result, or stack a number of shots of several seconds, depending on if your lens can obtain a result with a lot of detail in it. Post-processing is also very important in how your final image will turn out. Planets. You may not know that, but you can take photos of the planets without a telescope. Sure, you most likely won't find any details in them, but it is still very nice to know that you photographed another planet with your own camera. We specifically recommend giving Saturn and Jupiter a try. They both have several bright moons that your DSLR camera can spot, even in live view, making it very easy to frame and capture. Number 15. Comet 
The point is, you can get an image of a comet with just a DSLR camera. Although it helps if you have a bright one with long tails. So that is all for this episode. We will have a more descriptive blog post up on our website soon and you can find that at galactic-hunter.com. So we'll see you guys next time and clear skies.